You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Relationship Rehab with your host, Nancy Landrum. This is the place to gather practical skills for improving the quality of your relationships. Nancy considers you the hero since you're willing to improve your own communication and conflict management skills in order to heal past wounds and create happier relationships. So please welcome the host of Relationship Rehab, Nancy Landrum. Hi, this is Nancy Landrum, your host of Relationship Rehab on Bold Brave TV. Although I am the host of the show, I want you to remember that you are the hero because you evidently are here looking for tips to help improve your relationships. And you're going to hear some really great tips today. Last session, the last show that I taped, you may remember I covered the five levels of listening. I'm going to do a brief review of that and then introduce my guests. The first level is ignoring, where someone knows that you're trying to get their attention, but they just ignore you. It's so rude and so disrespectful. And, you know, there may be times when it's necessary, but um, it's a, the lowest level of listening. And then the next level up is pretending to listen, where you act like you're you're paying attention, but you're not really because you have your attention on a TV show or you're reading or doing something that you don't want to be bothered. So you just kind of say, yeah, uh-huh, but you're not really paying attention. The next level up of listening is selective listening, where you only hear part of the message being sent to you. And I find that quite often happens when when we're in a disagreement with someone. I see it in my coaching practice when couples are in a disagreement over an issue, they're having a skilled discussion, and the listening partner will only hear part of what the speaking partner says and it's usually the part that triggers more upset. They may not hear the vulnerable part where the party, their partner is saying, but I love you and I want to work this out, or something similar to that that's more vulnerable. So they just pick out the piece that they hear, quote unquote, that escalates the argument or causes a negative reaction in them. And then there is attentive listening, which is so important when we're learning something new, uh, reading something that is important to us, studying for an exam, or your partner is saying, please pick up the kids at 3.30 this afternoon. Uh, You remember the job is to pick up the kids and it's at 3.30 in the afternoon. That's attentive listening for the facts. But the highest level of listening is something called empathic listening. It's also called reflective listening or active listening or mirroring, or I like to call it listening for the purpose of understanding. And this level of listening in all of the communication skills courses that I'm aware of asks that the listener repeats back to the speaker what the speaker has said to make sure they understand it accurately. It is such a powerful level of listening. And uh, the couple you're about to meet uh, particularly love the skill of listening for the purpose of understanding. 
I'd like to introduce to you Josh and Molly Billings, friends of mine. Thank you so much for being with me on the show today, Josh and Molly. Are Thanks, you with me? Nancy, for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Oh, gosh, you're so welcome. I wonder if you would tell our audience something about the condition or the level of satisfaction with your marriage before you learned the, that skill of listening to understand? That's a good question. So before, mm -hmm. like out of 10, scale of one to 10? You can use that. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I can say what I think, then okay. you can go. <laughs> I would say um, like a seven before. Okay. How about you? Yeah, I'd probably say a six, seven. Because um, we're pretty good most of the time, but then we'd have arguments, and that's when, uh, you know, the skills that we learned became more helpful in those moments, and so it kind of helps resolve um, issues that might come up every once in a while. So, what were your arguments like before you learned the skill of listening to understand? Well, I'd say there's um. I tended to shut down and not really want to express, and she tended to be more loud and kind of <laughs> loud. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how did you? Well, first of all, you learned the skill of listening to understand. How did that impact the quality of your marriage and the, you know, whatever disagreements you had from then on? Well, I would say that feeling heard is such uh, an important thing for all of us humans to, um, to, it's just, it's so important to feel heard. And now I feel like Josh is hearing what I'm saying instead of just telling me what he's thinking. He actually stops to hear what I'm saying, even if he doesn't agree, even if it's, even if it's not anything that he fully understands for himself, it's just nice to hear him stop, listen to what I'm saying, and repeat it back to me. <laughs> so, Molly, what happens to your emotions when he repeats back to you and you know you've been heard? I go from level 10, wanting to yell and scream. It calms me down so I can stay present in the moment without exploding. We're going to continue this interview right after we go to commercial break, and you'll hear more about Josh and Molly's journey. This is Nancy Landrum on Relationship Rehab for Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. 
Rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies. Find settings that allow them to be the most productive and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Relationship Rehab. This is your host, Nancy Landrum, for Bold Brave TV. We're talking to Josh and Molly Billings, and Molly just explained how calming it is for her when Josh repeats back what she's saying. It takes her level from wanting to yell to down to much calmer. So Josh, how does listening to understand impact you when Molly listens to you and repeats back? It helps me feel understood. Um... A lot of times when you're mad, you're just kind of like bouncing off each other rather than actually hearing anything. And um, and a lot of times in an argument, you just want to get your point across. And if you feel like you're not getting your point across, then you're going to be getting more angry or shut down more. And so it helps me just feel more understood so we can get past whatever it is we're arguing about. So it helps you stay engaged rather than disconnecting? Oh, yeah. I mean... For sure, because um, that would be the natural inclination would just be just repeat that same thing you're trying to get across because you feel like it's not being heard. In fact, one of the uh, clues that the person speaking isn't being heard is when they keep repeating back the same point. It's like maybe if you maybe you'll hear me this time, um, which that's a clue for your partner. So what is it like for both of you to be the listener and be asked to listen at that higher level of listening to understand? Molly, what's it like for you? Well, in the heat of the moment, it's hard, but I we've practiced the skill enough to where I know what I'm supposed to do and and I can do it. But in that moment, I do want to get my point across, but I know I'm not going to until I actually hear what he's saying and yes. and let him know that I hear what he's saying. Yes. <laughs> so it's like you have to set your own impulse aside, the impulse that wants to be heard first, like listen to me first, yes. rather than me quieting down and able to listen to you. Is that what you're describing? That's absolutely what I'm trying to say, <laughs> yes. Okay. And Josh, what's it like for you to be the listener when you have to set your own agenda aside and listen to Molly? Yeah, it's definitely, it's not easy at first, um, but you just have to, you know, calm yourself, try to calm down yourself enough to just listen so, because you know you want to hear what they have to say, even though you want to get your point across, so that you guys can come to some happy medium, hopefully, or some place that's a, a place of agreement, and you can't get to that agreement unless you hear what they're actually saying. So definitely helpful. So the outcome for you as far as disagreements are concerned, you've been practicing this long enough and with enough um, situations where it was required that you've learned that the listening to understand skill will help both of you calm down and help you reach an agreement. Mm -hmm. So you've got you've got some history there of successes that helps you do it maybe easier now than it was in the beginning. Would you say that's true? Oh, definitely, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> it is hard in the beginning for nearly everyone. Mm -hmm. So Josh, would you tell our listeners what you do for a living and if you have been able to use this skill on the job. Oh, yes, um, so I'm a registered nurse. I work on a telemetry med surge unit. So I um, you know, deal with patients and patient families and doctors and other nurses all day long. Um, and it definitely helps with um, communicating to patients because um, you know, a lot of times that are in a very hard place, they could be, I, I, I tell people that I give patients a lot of grace because they could be one of the worst days of their life while they're there. And one thing that I, they find frustrating is I, like feeling like they don't know what's going on or doctors coming, run, kind of running in and out and like they don't really um, 
understand what's happening. So a lot of times I'll try to use mirroring when I'm speaking to them so that they know that I hear what they're saying because they feel not heard a lot of the time. And it seems to calm them down a lot and feel a lot better about their situation that at least someone is hearing what, you know, their situation and exactly what their needs are and what their feelings are. When, especially now with um, a lot of the COVID restrictions, people just, like family's not in the hospital as much. So they're kind of just alone a lot. And it's like for someone to just hear them, it's really powerful. So I think it's very helpful. I can only imagine how much it would mean to me if I were alone in a hospital. I don't feel well and I don't understand the procedures or I don't understand what's going to happen next. To have someone in that environment listen to my concerns and be able to answer my questions. By any chance, has your demonstration of this skill impacted people around you, the other staff members, to be a little bit more empathic? Um, with other staff members, um, I don't use it as much with them because they're not, um, I don't know, people are just so busy, they're running around all the time. And um, okay. sometimes I'll kind of, we'll talk about like, <laughs> there's a lot of like begrudging things about what's going on in whatever situations and just kind of listening to them and talking about like their situation. And I'll mirror back a little bit so they feel like they know that I know their situation. Mm -hmm. so, um, but I'm not sure if it's actually rubbed off on them specifically. <laughs> um, I think it's really important in the uh, def definitely with like patient to nurse situations because they really are reaching out more. And I feel like the nurses are more just like running around like, oh, like just trying to get whatever it is done. And so they're kind of not really fully engaging a lot of times and listening. <laughs> they're taking care of their to-do list. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, it, I think it's pretty amazing that you're modeling empathic listening, not only for the patients, but, you know, at times when maybe other staff members overhear you modeling it, I hope you have the chance to do some more active teaching of this skill to to uh, hospital staff members. Molly, in just a minute, I'm going to ask you the same question about what you do for a profession. She has a very interesting profession that has profoundly impacted my life. I'm eager for you to hear about it. But we need to go to commercial break again. This is Nancy Landrum on Bold Brave TV. You're watching Relationship Rehab and you are the hero because you're here picking up tips that will improve your the relationships. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com 
Caregiving.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Hi, this is Nancy Landrum back with you on Relationship Rehab on Bold Brave TV. I'm interviewing Josh and Molly Billings, and they've got such wonderful things to say about before they learned the skill of listening to understand what it has done for their marriage, what it's like to use it. And just recently, we were talking about Josh using the skill in his work. Uh, he works in hospitals with people that are very distressed and don't feel very well and desperately need to be heard, someone in that environment. So Molly, would you tell our listeners what your profession is? Describe it to them the best you can. Right. Right. Well, I am an energy clearing expert. I work on the subconscious level when it comes to confidence or money mindset issues, or love, and I really enjoy working with entrepreneurs and um, building their confidence and their belief in their business. So I do use this mirroring technique or active listening um, every time I work with a client. Before I learned this method, I would hear what the client would say, I'd take my notes, and then my mind would switch straight to, okay, what are we gonna work on? How am I gonna address this? And I would move on. But now that I know how to use mirroring, when I'm taking the notes, I do my best to repeat back to them so they know that I'm listening, I've heard what they've said, and I take that moment, and the coolest thing is, is when I repeat it back to them, they'll go a little bit deeper and I can get, we can get to a deeper level of what I'm going to do my clearing on. It's super powerful. <laughs> I've actually experienced this with Molly. I've been working with her to improve my own confidence level as well as the uh, profitability of my business. It's profound work and I've noticed you uh, using mirroring, mirroring back to me what I tell you and then quite often another thought will come to me that's a deeper level of understanding. And that's very common. Um, I was working with a couple just yesterday and they were doing what I call a skill discussion that they were listening to understand, repeating back to each other what was said. And what started out to be talking about a very minor issue fleshed out to be a much more major issue and they found some very powerful resolutions to the problem that will make it easier in the future. So thank you for sharing that, both of you, Molly and Josh. So has this skill had any impact on your relationship with your children? Oh yes, very much so. <laughs> I would say that this uh, has been been the biggest change in our life as a family is learning this skill. Um, I don't mean to get emotional, but uh, it's it's hard with three kids, especially two teenagers. And um, I feel like after learning this mirroring, the way I address my kids is just completely different. There's so much more respect when you hear someone and they feel heard. Um, anything that you wanna? So when you, excuse me, Josh, when you say so much more respect, what? how do you actually practice the skill with your children compared to what you used to do? Well, a lot of times, um, you know, something will come up, um, for instance, like a, our daughter sometimes has anxiety and rather than me just like, saying like um, recommendations or um, my perspective on something, I'll mirror back what she's saying and she'll she'll start calming down because she really feels heard and understood and um, really, and then also like you were saying before, like maybe opening up a little bit and going a little deeper. And a lot of times once 
we've gone deeper and just dis discussed her issues. It's like she doesn't really want me to give her instructions. She just wants to be heard a lot of the time. Yeah, this is this is our daughter that's on the autism spectrum. And, you know, she's she's 14 now. She's not having meltdowns like she did when she was younger. But when she starts to spiral and get stuck on a subject, this is the only way she will get out of it. I and see. this stuck feeling that that she gets in could last hours and hours. And now oh, yesterday, wow. yeah, yesterday yeah. she got stuck. And I think it was like 15 minutes of mirroring and Josh did it with her. Mm -hmm. And what did she say at the end of that? She told you something. Um, she just was saying that she's like, oh, she, it was like she wasn't anxious anymore. She just felt like she just felt better than she had she been said before. She felt something. better. <laughs> <laughs> so because she's somewhere on the autism scale, when she gets anxious, she will spiral into extreme upset. And you said sometimes that upset would last for hours in the past. It didn't it didn't matter what you suggested or tried with her. It didn't seem to help her come out of that anxiety attack until you learned to mirror what she was saying. Am I am I repeating that back correctly? Yeah, like it would just take her a super long time to get out of it rather than like we could be focused and move past it. Relatively quickly, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's really changed. Um, I would just get so frustrated with her and like, oh, we're here again. Oh, it's just yeah. it's so draining to deal with it. Now yeah. it's a little draining, but it's only draining for 15 minutes, not for two, three hours and ruin my whole entire day and ruin her whole entire day. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at some point in time there will be parents listening to this uh, episode that will just really appreciate the tip that you've given them that is so powerful. I've, even with children that are not on the autism spectrum, there are times when our kids get upset. Any kid does like we do. And how has this skill... I'm, we're going to a commercial break here in just a minute, but when we get back, I'd like you to tell the listeners how this skill has helped you with your other two children. So this is Nancy Landrum with Relationship Rehab. You've just learned a powerful, some powerful tips from Josh and Molly Billings about repeating back to help people feel heard, help the speaker feel heard, and uh, to help them calm down if they're upset. This is Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. 
Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Thank you. Hi, this is Nancy Landrum back with Relationship Rehab on Bold Brave TV. You're hearing some wonderful tips for helping family members, helping yourself calm down, helping people at your work uh, be heard and feel heard from Josh and Molly Billings. You've been sharing about how mirroring or listening to understand and repeating back really helps your daughter who's on the autism scale calm down when she gets hold of something kind of obsesses about a particular anxiety. It helps her calm down very quickly. How has this skill impacted your relationship with your other two children? Well, they, um, they're, they're pretty, pretty easy kind of kids, easy going compared to sister. Um, I, when they get home from school, I make a point of it to just ask them about their day and <laughs> just repeat back what they tell me. And my kids always talk to me. They they come to me and talk to me, and I feel like they do because they feel heard. Um, and I remember, Nancy, you taught us something that you call taking out the trash. I'm so glad you brought that up. Go ahead. <laughs> And I've done that with those, it works well with those two Mm -hmm. kids, not with our middle that we were talking about before. But I don't know if you, are you gonna talk about taking out the trash? Cause this works with both of them. They enjoy it. I demonstrated taking out the trash on last week's episode, but just a quick review of it. It's a simple way to help someone kind of download their emotions and as the listener this time I don't repeat back what is said but I listen without judgment without advice without comment and just ask basically five questions over and over again what are you mad about what else are you mad about as soon as they can't think of anything else I go on to what are you sad about what else are you sad about and then What do you wish would change? What do you want to change? And until they can't think of anything else, then we move on to what are you afraid of or nervous about? And when they can't think of anything else, after I've asked that question several times, then they follow up with what are you glad about? So that's the exercise Molly's talking about using with her eldest and youngest child. Is that correct, Molly? Yes my 16 year old, I remember doing this exercise with him and he was really opening up and he looked at me like waiting to hear my response. And Mm -hmm. I just kept going and I saw his face kind of change like, oh, mom's not going to try to fix this or mom's not going to try to comment on what I just said. And he kept going and he really, he enjoyed it. Do they ever ask you to take out the trash with them? I think we need to do that again soon. But my youngest, hat, she did ask for it. Uh huh. The ten-year-old. Mm-hmm. That's been my experience with other clients who have used this exercise with their children. That it feels so good to the child to be heard uh, without judgment, without a lecture, without advice, just to be heard. That they sometimes ask for it again in the future. So is there anything else that you would like to add as far as the impact of this skill on your marriage and on your family? Well, I mean, I just feel like it's been really great for us. It's helped us to resolve uh, conflict much faster um, and then, you know, have get back to connection faster by having those resolutions faster. And, you know, you, if you can get past your problems and past um, things that are going on, 
you're just going to have more quality time because you're not going to be stewing on those things. So it's just going to make things better in general. So yeah. it's been really great in that way. I agree. I think the with the listening, um, we're not like solving the problem, mm -hmm. which is what we had always been trying to do. Like we need to solve this problem. Now it's like, well, we both hear each other. Both of our points of view are valid. And yeah, now we can, we can connect again, even though we don't agree, which we had never been able to connect back again in such a short amount of time mm -hmm. when we would do our circular arguments. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the complaints I hear about listening to understand is that it takes too much time. And yet what you're saying is it actually shortens the time that you're in conflict. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. So the title of this show was called Creating Emotional Connection. And what you're saying is it helps you get back to being emotionally connected rather than the distance that's created when you're in conflict. Mm -hmm. Yes. Gosh, mm -hmm. that, ought, that ought to be. That's worth, I think it would be worth a lot. It was certainly worth a lot when Jim and I learned this skill to help us uh, get past the conflict in our marriage. Anything else you'd like to add? Thank you, Nancy, for teaching us how to yes. do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, it was such a pleasure to teach you. You were both such incredible students, so eager to learn and so eager to put it into practice. You're my ideal client. <laughs> and thank you so much for everything you shared on the show today. Such valuable tips, such valuable information about how to create and then sustain emotional connections so that the times that you or your children are in conflict are, are just reduced so you don't have to suffer that emotional distance or in the case of your daughter, the anxiety that she's experiencing. I'm so glad, so appreciative that you took the time to be guests on my show today. Thank you so much, Josh and Molly Billings. Well, you're very Thank welcome. you. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. When we come back from commercial break in just a minute, I'm going to go over some of the outcomes, some of the things that the positive outcomes that happen when you practice listening to understand or mirroring or reflective listening, whatever name you wish to put to it. There's some, I've thought of five, there may be more, but I've thought of five outcomes to using this skill that are so valuable in any relationship, whether it's marriage or parents to children or like Josh and Molly use it in their professions. Uh, you can use this skill with strangers. I once used it when a, a renter to one of my properties was very angry with me, and I used that skill to help him calm down. This is Nancy Landrum with Relationship Rehab on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. 
Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live to Dare to Soar, Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Network and tune in radio as Dr. RC will provide thought provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Hello again, this is Nancy Landrum for Relationship Rehab on Bold Brave TV. You've been listening to Josh and Molly Billings as they talked about the tremendous difference that this listening skill made to their marriage. It helped them both feel heard, even in the midst of conflict, so that it reduced the conflict much more quickly. They were able to come to agreements much more quickly. It also helped them with their uh, daughter, who's on the autistic scale. She sometimes gets very obsessed with some kind of anxiety. And in the past, it used to take hours for her to calm down. But now either Josh or Molly will just begin repeating back to her what she's saying. And many times the upset is over in 15 minutes rather than hours. Such an amazing gift to that child. And as well as using the exercise taking out the trash with um, their other two children, We demonstrated that skill last week on the show. If you'd like a copy of that exercise, Taking Out the Trash, you can go to my website, and I think that is image number three. Uh, Justin, if you don't mind putting that up. Image number three is my website. If you go to that website, there's a page on the website where you can contact me and ask for a copy of the exercise, taking out the trash. There are several valuable results when you choose to repeat back what someone is saying to you. It, um, it's a different, a higher level of listening than most of us are used to doing. But with practice, as Josh and Molly just said, it becomes very natural. It's not mechanical or forced or doesn't feel awkward anymore. But why repeat back? Here's five good reasons. One is it reassures the speaker that the message was heard accurately. So many misunderstandings happen between the speaker and the listener. And if the listener repeats back what the speaker has said, then the speaker is reassured that the message was heard accurately. Brene Brown, uh, I love her quote, that emotional connection is made when we feel seen, heard, and valued. And that is one of the things that creates emotional connection is when we take the time and the effort to listen carefully and repeat back to the speaker what is said. Also, it gives the speaker the chance to make a correction if you heard them inaccurately, if there was a mistake. In the way when you use your own wording to repeat something back and it wasn't quite accurate for the speaker, then they have the chance to correct the misunderstanding before it leads to hurt feelings or uh, just simply a misunderstanding. And often, I believe one of either Mosh or Jolly mentioned that when their partner repeats back to them what has been said, then the speaker often goes to a deeper level of disclosure, usually a more vulnerable level of disclosure. That happens so often when um, Jim and I were practicing this skill to begin with. 
uh, when our marriage was in trouble and we needed some more respectful ways of communicating to help us resolve our main issue and reclaim the love of an, our, in our marriage by having the partner repeat back what was said. For instance, I as the speaker would go deeper, become more vulnerable in what I was sharing because the listener is proving that that they are a safe place for my vulnerability. So it often leads to greater levels of disclosure and greater understanding. It's also interesting that when the one who is speaking shares something and the listener repeats it back, uh, the speaker gets deeper insight into themselves and then uh, expresses something on a deeper or more vulnerable level. I had a client recently say, as he was the speaker and his wife was repeating back to him, I'm learning more about myself. That surprised him. But that is what happens when listening for the purpose of understanding is used. Number four, it facilitates empathy for each other's point of view. Like you understand that each point of view has merit, is valid. There's no wrong point of view. It takes you out of that right, wrong place where almost all fights escalate. Um, when I'm right and therefore you must be wrong and the other person says, no, I'm right, you're wrong. Well, it takes the whole right, wrong level of discussion off the table so that you're you're spending more energy to understand what the other person's point of view is. In that empathy, that growing empathy for each other's point of view, you your hearts are softened toward each other so that you're ready to find solutions that you weren't ready to discuss before. I like to describe um, the condition Jim and I were in when our marriage was pretty bad. Uh, we had driven each other to opposite corners of a boxing ring. And over here, I was saying, I'm right. You need to agree with me. And Jim in the other corner was saying, no, I'm right. You need to see it my way. Well, we had been fighting about this particular issue for years. And we'd driven each other to such extreme judgmental positions that we couldn't hear each other. And our coach, who was so wise, gave us this skill of listening at a deeper level. And as we, in session after session of skill discussions, and for us, we practiced this like three or four times a week for four or five weeks, but every time we heard each other at a deeper level, we gradually came closer to the middle and could understand each other's point of view with greater empathy. That kind of tilled the ground, uh, added the, if you want to call it fertilizer, it added to the ground of our relationship so that we were more capable of agreeing on a solution to our hot issue that when we finally could agree on a solution, it um, it remained resolved. We never had another fight. We never had another fight about any issue because we knew this skill and would have kind of immediately default to it whenever we had a disagreement. We'll be back in a minute. This is Nancy Landrum on Relationship Rehab for Bold Brave TV. See you in a minute. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern 
on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hi, this is Nancy Landrum with Bold Brave TV on the show Relationship Rehab. I want to remind you again that you are the hero of the show if you're showing up looking for tips to help your relationships get better, have better quality. We've been talking about listening as a way of building emotional connection, creating and sustaining emotional connection. Uh, I want to just briefly touch on what it's, how to respond to someone who is in grief. Um, Several years ago, my oldest son died, and somewhere later in my agenda of shows, you'll be hearing a lot more about Steve and my relationship with him. But I'll never forget my friends Eric and Deborah calling and asking if they could come over and just give me the opportunity. All they said was tell us about Steve. And I can't tell you how refreshing that was. As a grieving mom, we sat out on my patio, I opened my family album of pictures and got to tell them a lot of the wonderful memories I had of Steve. There's so, so much discomfort around grief that it's hard for people to know what to say and they say the most unhelpful things. The best thing you can do for someone who is in grief is just to listen carefully and even repeat back what they're saying. So you may have been intrigued by Molly's description of her business. Justin, if you would put image number two up, this is Molly's web address. If you're interested in what she can do to help you with your your business and with your self-confidence around your business, go to her website and contact Molly Billings. Uh, She's done an amazing amount of positive uh, improvement for me and for my business. I highly recommend her. And then if you were, excuse me, intrigued by the exercise of taking out the trash, you can go to my website, which is image number three, and um, go to the page that says contact Nancy and just email me and, you know, just put trash in the subject line and I'd be very happy to send you a copy of that exercise that Josh and Molly have found so valuable with their children and as well as many other clients with both adults and children. Today was about creating emotional connection, that that place between two people where both feel seen, heard, and valued. There's no easier way to create and sustain emotional connection than practicing the skill of listening to understand or mirroring, or reflective listening, or active listening, whatever you choose to use as a name for it. It all has, they all have the same characteristic of repeating back to the speaker what the speaker has said. In fact, 
um, one of the examples I give in my book, the How to Stay Married and Love It book, is that hostage negotiators are trained to use this skill with the person holding others hostage and demanding ransom money or whatever it is they're demanding. They will repeat back to them to calm the perpetrator, the criminal, calm them down so that they're more open to negotiation. It's an amazing skill. I hope, I'd love for you to use it in your own family with your own work and let me know how it has worked for you. This is Nancy Landrum signing off from Relationship Rehab on Bold Brief TV. See you next week. This has been Relationship Rehab with your host, Nancy Landrum. Although Nancy's passion has been to help marriages, these skills apply equally to all relationships. So tune in each week to improve your relationships on the next episode of Relationship Rehab. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.